me. Alienware. Uh, I must admit, I have a huge, ladies, soft spot. Where do you think I was going with that? Uh, for Alienware, like an old high school crush on memories. Because my first ever personal major laptop purchase back in the day was indeed an Alienware. It was the old uh, 17R4 from 2016-ish. Had the 6th gen i7. 980M Maxwell graphics. Yeah, it was an absolute weapon, mate. It was basically a gutted and rebadged Dell Precision with a graphics amplifier or an eGPU. I absolutely loved it. And I used that to make many a 3D CAD video on this very channel. But anyway, uh, that Alienware, well, I flogged it uh, a while back when I stopped traveling for work. And since then, I haven't seen a single Alienware laptop since. Until now, because in typical tech 3D style, uh, being painfully and shamefully reminded of where I sit in the pecking order. <laughs> a hearty, a hearty six months after they released this damn thing, Alienware finally bestowed upon me a loan of their M15 R5 Ryzen edition. Uh, so this little people pleaser features what everyone was apparently asking for, which was the higher end modern AMD architecture in a higher end consumer laptop. And this one is currently priced around the two grand price point. Uh, of course, different configurations will vary the price point, but this one's got the Ryzen 9 5900HX in, which is very close to being, but not quite the highest spec that AMD has on the mobile platform. It's got eight cores, 16 threads, boosting up to 4.6 gigahertz, 32 gigs, DDR4, terabyte Gen 4 SSD, and for graphics, well, made graphics, Alienware, for your delectation and delight, they mounted the Loch Ness Monster as their steed of choice as they gallivanted off into the forests of Narnia to collect droplets of unicorn shit to melt down into what became the mythical 3000 series ampere GPU of the mobile RTX 3070 8 gig variety and crammed it in here. Well, that little urban myth powers a pretty tasty looking 15 inch 1440p panel at 240 hertz. It's got G-Sync, it's got advanced Optimus, which packs, or well, the whole panel packs in along the top. Uh, and it'll do. Not very good 720p webcam with Windows. Hello, facial recognition support. For ports and connectivity, not the best. It's okay, could be better. Two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports on the right-hand side, a third on the rear, 2.5 gig ethernet with a global headset jack on the left. Power in, full-size HDMI 2.1 and USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port on the rear, just one. Uh, which doubles up as a display port out. And for me, this port offering is pretty weak and disappointing, even for a 15 inch chassis. Uh, now, I know it's a gaming laptop, but uh, an SD card slot would have been appreciated. There's, uh, there's absolutely space for it. And as well as one more USB-C port on the side would have been appreciated as well, considering there's no mini display port here for the likes of VR. Because if you want to connect up VR or an external display and you don't want to use HDMI, well, you've just lost your only USB-C port because you've got to use that for display port out. So yeah, that's not very good. Uh, the speaker's absolute dirge, but that's to be expected. Uh, the keyboard, this doesn't have the mechanical keyboard, but uh, the keyboard that comes with this as stock isn't actually that bad, which is a bonus these days. The keys are springy and firm, make a nice sound, nice feel of them. I've used worse. Uh, it's, all, it's backlit, of course, and some. It's got 16.8 million colors at your disposal. Oodles of customization options for those who've earned the I have way too much f***ing free time in my life achievement. Uh, oh, how I strive to be that person. And whilst you're at it, there's a pretty nice looking Halo RGB ring thing, bar thing on the back that you can customize to your heart's content. For reasons that I'll never understand, because you can't see the damn things on the back. There'll, there'll be people who could own this their entire lives and never see that bar on the back. I mean, it'll be a challenge, but someone might. Uh, it's got obviously Wi-Fi 6, right? It's kind of a given these days, which is good. It's, it's impressive. Uh, it's from Killer though, who, I kill it. They must either undercut everybody in the networking game or have the most insanely effective corporate whining and dining policy because everybody huffs and sighs when they open up their new laptop and it's got killer networking. Uh, it's got Bluetooth 5.2, uh, weight is 5.5 pounds, 2.5 kilos. The 240 power brick is a disappointingly massive, cheap 90s looking calculator, which seriously, Dell, come on. There's no Velcro straps or those little rubber doodad things for managing the cables, which are an absolute mess. Like I'm, obviously, the, the target demographic for this won't care about the mess of the cables or the look of the power brick, but it just irritates that mess just irritates me. The whole package irritates me because I know Dell have already iterated on that, made a better design choice and moved past it. But anyway, enough of all that. Quick intermission for all the waffle. And let's take a look on how this thing performs. Don't forget though, this is a pro channel. The angle that I fly at here is working professionals who want a top performing system for software that supports and runs well on hardware like this. But guess what mate? Shock and indeed horror. 
They also want something that they can use for gaming in the downtime instead of buying two separate laptops or a separate desktop. It's really that simple. It really is. It's not illegal. It's not a crime, right? We want a game in our spare time. Just, it, it's a perfectly valid use case for something like this. Uh, Reet though, up until this point, I haven't had anything through the doors that I can compare this to in a fair comparison head to head on a chart. The only thing I've had, which is remotely close, and it's still not even a fair comparison, was the uh, i9 based MSI G E76 Raider. But I do completely appreciate that that was a four grand laptop. It wasn't worth four grand, but this is a two grand laptop. The thing is, the Raider, it was only four grand really because it had the RTX 3080 GPU in, which made up the majority of that cost. Uh, but most of my tests are CPU based. The CPU is the i9 11980HK, which is actually very comparable to the 5900HX in here. But the Raider also had 64 gigs of RAM. This has got 32, but the tests aren't RAM limiting. All I'm saying is I know that it's not a fair head to head. It's not a like for like. Uh, I'm not putting them on the same chart as a versus comparison. It's just the only one I've got and it's there for context. So with that being said, take a look at some benchmarks. Indeed, uh, the 5900HX, it's not the highest part in the mobile stack for AMD. That crown goes to the 5980HX, but after some quick Googling, I can't actually see the 5980HX in any laptops on sale today. I don't know if they've actually used it yet, uh, or if anyone's taken them up on it, but... Uh, so the i9-11980HK is the direct competitor to what's in here for CPU performance, which the majority of my tests are often the ones that were GPU flagged and noted as such. So on balance, and again, uh, this has the disadvantage of being a 15 inch chassis as opposed to the Raider, which was 17. I'm sounding like I'm compared. They're not compared. I'm just saying that the Raider was a 17 inch chassis as well. But I must admit the CPU performance after all the hype that was about Ryzen uh, mobile platform, I was disappointed with the CPU performance. Like Invmark, for example, 46, 132, isn't a bad score. Not by a long shot, but it's nothing to write home about uh, for a flagship CPU on a, an entirely CPU bound test. Bearing in mind someone with an i7 laptop with a 3050 Ti found themselves higher up than this. Uh, and all my tests as well, they were done whilst this had Windows 10 on just to rule that out as being a thing. Uh, similarly with Autodesk Revit, 94 seconds for this on the modeling test is actually borderline abysmal. That's close to what we were getting on Intel's 10th gen platform. And what's really odd about all this is those are single threaded tests. But when you put this through the Cinebench single core test, uh, it's neck and neck with the i9 in the Raider. So if you would just do those tests and leave it at that, you'd be naively mistaken for concluding that this and the Raider, the i9, were in on an, on an even keel for single threaded performance, but it just isn't. It's just when, when you're close. Uh, but of course, what was apparent, very much uh, glaringly apparent, 
was that this dominated across pretty much all the parallel compute tasks, like V-Ray rendering, Keyshot rendering, and all that was backed up by an impressive for a laptop Cinebench multi-core score. But like I said about 12th gen video, how often is your CPU actually pegged at 100% whilst working these days? Who's rendering on the CPU day in and day out when GPU rendering is more effective, much more effective? Uh, there, there'll be genuinely a lot of people who do that, but in our circles, uh, our work, it's not even possible to make it, you know, multi-core, the parallel compute, and we rarely see that in anything other than really small and frequent bursts. Uh, but for the GPU tests, yeah, not really a fair comparison. The 3070 was unsurprisingly behind the 3080 for the majority, but that's to be expected when it, the 3080 commands two grand premium. Uh, and I actually expected more of a gap at two grand with that 3080, but that's why I said the Raider wasn't worth four grand in the first place. And in a change from the norm on Tech 3D, just to, I don't know, just to spice things up, there was two games in there at the end, because those are things that I'd be personally interested in using something like this for. Driving games, one was an arcade game, one was a simulator. Forza Horizon 5 at 1080 and 1440p high in ultra settings and a set of Corsa, the best driving simulator in the world at 1080 and 1440p. Okay, if you do some research and Googling around, you'll swiftly find that this is actually not the best at gaming. It doesn't actually keep up with similar spec laptops at games uh, and that might have something to do with this thing running mad hot, mate. Uh, like my Invermark test, for example, that's not sustained levels of mental stress, but the M15 was over 100 degrees doing the solid sweep test, pulling around 55 watts on the CPU package, and then it peaked at 65 watts when it was asked to compute some of the drawing views, which that was the point when the clock frequencies thought, yeah, f this for a laugh, we're off. Uh, but again, look, like, like I said again in the older league video, the primary focus here is buying systems that make us money. Entertainment, it's always gonna be secondary. Now is not the time to get into a discussion about how much power consumption actually matters when a day's work on something like this could earn you $1,000 in a day rate for some people. Uh, but when the high power draw and then the high temps as a result leave performance squandered, well, that's when you start taking issue with it. But that's obviously the case in pretty much every situation. It goes without saying, but all that aside, that old school, high school crush that I had on Alienware, right? I've, Facebook stalked it, has it blossomed with age? And is it, is it now a MILF? Do people still say MILF? I don't care, I'm running with it. Is it or has it had too many Mackie D's over the years, uh, mixed with poor dental hygiene, destroying those fond memories you once had on your childhood crush? Who's now a shadow of a former self? I'm running, we've all done it, right? Uh, but for me, it, the truth lies somewhere in the middle, right? Don't get me wrong, this thing's beautiful. Well, it looks nice, right? On the table here, it looks nice. Some YouTubers, right, have made the dark side of the moon color theme look absolutely spectacular and classy. In thumbnails, right, with dramatic lighting, neon effects and shadows. Up close and personal, though, this thing just is not as premium as Alienware's of old. Uh, the build quality is not great. It's subjective, of course. Take my, what the hell do you know? You've only got 70,000 subscribers, you scrub opinion. <laughs> it's exactly that. It's an opinion, but like, there's just no premium materials here, right? Like the main, like this, this surface here, it's just plastic. It's just basic, smooth plastic. And Dell know the significance of that, of having soft touch finishes here, because they use that in their premium lines. And my review sample as well, the lid, well, that allegedly high endurous surface finish, well, it's heavily rubbed down at multiple points from what I presume is reckless or careless past tech reviewers resting this upside down on a table to open it up, which obviously the average user is not gonna have that bother to deal with, but it just doesn't bode well for the build quality and inspire confidence in that, which is only further reinforced when just, just opening the lid, it just creaks like an old friggin' floorboard. So for me, the ownership experience of this laptop just doesn't quite correlate to the price you're paying for it, two grand. I think buyer's remorse might kick in for some people after they pull this out of the box, but to be honest mate, none of that matters or should matter if it performs. And it kind of did and kind of didn't, right? It's complicated, always is. For two grand, you're actually getting decent performance, but it's beaten out in most areas that I care about by Intel's 11th gen. But you see, here's the complication. The 5900HX in here and the i9-11980HK might be in competition with each other, but the i9, yeah, it's better, but you try finding that in a laptop anywhere near two grand, mate, and you're gonna have a job on your hands. Uh, unfortunately, I've not had the chance to test a laptop with the i7-11800H in, 
uh, but by all accounts, because the i9 is generally too much of a beefcake for most laptop chassis, uh, the i7 is as good in most areas as the i9. So look, all I can say is after having this, if it was my money, this one's not for me. I'd be looking towards something with the i7 in, or possibly even hanging on a while longer and maybe seeing what 12th gen mobile brings to the table. Because the performance on the desktop of 12th gen is anything to go by, mate. The gains that were saw there, well, I'm expecting absolute great things on the mobile platform with Alder Lake. So yeah, that's my kind of review of this. I don't, yeah. I'm only doing this six months on because it is the Ryzen model, right? Um, it, when you do reviews this late, you tend to get people coming along who have already bought it and they're just looking to hear people validate their opinion, you know, like they bought the right thing. So yeah, it tells about that. It's not a bad laptop, obviously, but yeah, just for the use case that I pitched these into, I just don't think it's the right thing. Uh, which then obviously, like I got in my MSI video, people criticizing me because it's a gaming laptop, you shouldn't be buying. Look, it's it, it's just because it's called a gaming laptop, it doesn't mean it's only used for gaming, right? People can buy it for work if they want to. They're the decision makers. If it works on that software, it's a perfectly legit use case to do that. Um, and people who work play games as well. If it works for both things, it's absolutely their choice. And that's what I'm here to do, right? Evaluate its use case there. So there you go. That's the Ryzen Edition Alienware M15R5. Yeah. I just I keep looking, I keep seeing these marks on the top. I'm just astounded that it's rubbed off so much over the uh, over the time that this has been dropped on the table. But anyway, I'm hoping to get the 12th gen version of these if I can uh, sooner than I got this one in. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I've got a backlog of stuff to clear, and then I'm going to dive deeper into all the late content with professional workflows. So stay tuned for that as well. Get subscribed if you're not already. Ding the bell. For more content like this, mate, so you can get notifications from YouTube. Uh, when I upload the videos. And yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.